Yo, what is up? We want to welcome you to the Street Gospel Podcast. I'm your host, Dave One. And uh, for everybody out there, thank you for tuning in. This is uh, episode number one. I mean, uh, finally got here. I know everybody was nudging me, pushing me to start something, but we finally got here. We're here. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors for really helping us out. Uh, our first sponsor is Anchor.fm. If you don't know who Anchor.fm is, uh, they're the ones that broadcast our podcast to all the major platforms. Uh, the best thing about Anchor.fm is that they are free. Free. So who doesn't like free? Uh, our next sponsor is Savior Brand. Uh, if you don't know Savior Brand, you can check them out at Savior Brand on Instagram, SaviorBrand.com. They're a faith-based clothing. Uh, they're into art, uh, graffiti, tattoo art, uh, all kinds of different art, the martial arts, uh, and most importantly, they're into God. So check out our sponsors. Uh, we want to thank them. Um, but we have a special guest today uh, for our very first episode. I cannot believe we got this guy in here. Um, he's an amazing dude. Uh, we've been friends for, um, I would say about seven, six, seven years. Uh, I have the pleasure of training with him. Um, he's my professor. I mean, he's a good dude all around. Uh, we've done some business together, which has been good. Um, but he is a really good guy. So I brought some music to, uh, introduce him to, and we're going to play it. So this guy right here is a King of the Cage veteran, champion, Hall of Famer, WEC veteran, UFC veteran. He is a jiu-jitsu legend, but I think his pride and joy is that he's a father, right? I mean, he's a father. He owns his own gym, JV Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, he goes all around. The country does seminars, teaches people how to not to get their butt kicked. But it's very privileged for Street Gospel to have them here today. Why don't you all give it up for Mr. Javier Vasquez? What's going on? <laughs> What's up, man? <clears throat> Let me tell you. How's it going? I was telling you. When I came in, the setup is fabulous. You like the setup? The setup is fabulous. I mean, we, we went all out, man. I mean, if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. You know what I mean? It's like, your, it's like your gym, right? It's like the gym. I mean, you go to your gym, it's massive mat space. I mean, it's immaculate. I mean, so, I mean, you went all out, right? You got to go, go big or go home. You definitely have to try and put your best foot forward, right? Right. I mean, that's, that's, um, that's the ticket right there. Yeah, I mean, it's harder, you know, you can't make the first impression twice, they say, right? So right. you have to, you know. So how has it been? You've had to be open for a few months, close down for three months, reopen for about a month maybe, and then close back down. I mean, it must be difficult being a business owner, you know, trying to keep students. Kind of, I mean, they're your customers. Yeah, I mean, you have to start shifting your entire focus, right? Unless you had something that was already set up in place for something like this to happen. Um, you know, everybody had to shift, you know. So everyone, everyone's making adjustments. You know, I, what, what I started doing with it is um, you could either take it as a, uh, what do they say, a curse or as a blessing. Sure. So... I tried to, you know, I prayed about it and I asked about it. I'm like, what do I do? Yeah. And it, and uh, he's like, I just started putting down my the curriculum and just trying to explain it and flow chart it. And, you know, so, you know, I, after a few weeks of, of putting them together and then you start going back, like in the save files and you see all of them, it looks crazy now. Man. But uh, it must be it must be a little weird for you. I mean, I, I would assume that over the last 30 years, you've either been training, competing or teaching and not to really have that consistency 
over the last, you know, since March, really. Um, you know, it must be kind of weird. I mean, I'm teaching in other ways. Okay. So what do you what do you what did you what did you do? Um, well, you know, I'm starting to realize that there are levels of consciousness in jiu-jitsu, right? So like when you first come in, it looks like everything is just happening in this chaotic fashion. And then you start kind of learning individual moves and you kind of try and figure out how to get to individual moves. And, eh, you know, maybe, maybe you get there, maybe you have some success, maybe you have some athletic ability, you're able to kind of make it work. But, you know, it is far more organized if you really understand what you're looking at. So there, it, there's a method. There's the a method. So not only do you have like levels of consciousness, that first level of just kind of knowing how not to fall on your face, right? Th- sure. Then then you start to understand, well, listen, if I go in this particular direction, you start getting a little bit more success consistently. Then you start to realize that as you try travel through those to go in that direction, you start encountering different obstacles. And you, then you start to understand how to beat each individual obstacle. And then, oh, now we're getting there. That would be like a second level of consciousness. Then, So there's a progression. There's a progression. Then you're trying to keep as much weight or maintain connection and not lose control. You, The whole idea is to be able to control and, and, and really dive into really understanding how to control people from right. every, every scenario. If you can control them, then you can... You can submit them if you can control them. True, true. I mean, so you're the, the progression that you're talking about. I mean, this has come over many years, right? I, I assume. I mean, you started out as a wrestler, right? What was what was that like? I mean, I know you grew up in San Gabriel Valley, El Monte, of all places. <laughs> yeah. look, 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 North I, El Monte, okay, North El Monte. I, okay, I know. I have a little story about this. So. I was thinking about you today, and I was thinking about Al Monte. And then you, I know you went to a Royal High School, right? Okay, so I knew people that went to Mountain View. Now the Duck Farm. What, what, what was yeah? What was funny about about that is I always thought it was funny because everybody that went to a Royal thought they were a little bit better than the people that went to Mountain View. It wasn't that much better. <laughs> it wasn't that much better. <laughs> it wasn't that much better. Like I mean, maybe it was because a royal you could point see, five. You could see better. the mountains, <laughs> and Mountain View you seen the freeway. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but it, but El Monte is tough. El Monte is tough. It is tough. So, what was it like growing up in El Monte? Because it, it was what your mom, a lovely woman, by the way, that I got to and Naira. Uh, yeah. Well, my sister was ten years older, so uh, she was, you know. She started going to college. She started getting married, doing all those things because she was ten years ahead of me. So, okay. yeah. By the time I, by the time she, she's gonna get mad that you put her her, her age out there. Well, I didn't say my age, but, <laughs> but uh, so she was a little she, she was a little bit older. So, um, yeah, it was yeah me, my mom, and my stepdad. And I mean, I actually lived. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I got bullied just like everybody else, right? You know. Just, Things happen. You're a kid, whatever. Right? right. Try to stay away from the guy, whatever. Yeah. But it wasn't like South El Monte. Like South El Monte were gang banging, EMF, yeah. the EMF yeah. gang. Um, the, that, that's the, the valley side. The, yeah, the, down down <laughs> towards like the mall, right? The right. valley side. Yeah, exactly. Um, and even beyond, like towards the 60s and stuff. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I tried not to. You just don't go to that side of town. And you, you were, I saw a picture of you on your Instagram. Baseball player. Yeah. Was that your first love of sports, baseball? Yeah, I loved baseball. Really? Yeah. What, what position I, did you play? I, I, I threw my arm out playing wiffle ball one summer. We <laughs> played so much wiffle ball. I was an outfielder. Outfielder. Yeah. Now, how long did you play baseball? Uh, I played it when I was 12. And then, like, it's a commitment. So, like, my family was, like, too much commitment, <laughs> even though I liked playing, right? You know what? That's that's is big. My wife says the same thing, that she loved playing basketball. Yeah. But her family didn't like the commitment of taking yeah. her to practice or going to Saturday Yeah, it's got to be convenient. It's got to work for everybody, yeah. right? So, yeah. um, so then when I got into high school, no, no, I played, I think, one year of, like, Pony League. Nice. Um, and then I, like, took a couple years off, and then I played in high school. 
And then I played four years in high school. Wow. And, and then I played uh, like two years of city baseball after that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you were decent. I guess so. I guess so. So you were always an athlete somehow, some way. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, you, you don't think that you're going to do it. I, I, I picture you like, like an Altuve. You know, little guy gets up to bat and just cranks that ball. Quick, uh, you know, quick what? around the bases. I, I don't think I was. I, I don't think I was necessarily all that good. But w- what I did do, uh, the games that I had big games, we won the league championship. Nice, like as a freshman and as a senior. Wow. So um, the moments that I shined, it just so happened that were important. Right. So. So where did where did wrestling come in then? Because it seems like you were committed to baseball, and then here comes yeah. wrestling. Well. Mm-hmm. When I wanted to wrestle as a freshman, and I wish, you know, it's just one of those rules of life, you know, if you really want something, don't don't uh, take no for an answer. Sure. So I went in, uh, and, and, I, and I missed the day to register or something, right? So I could have just as easily gone in and talked to them, and because the day passed, I let it go, and I missed that whole year just because of, because of that. Right? Wow. And... I, I just I just thought a lot different when I was younger. When you're told something that you know there's no going back, there's no arguing, there's no changing your mind, but sure. there is. You can fedaddle the system. Right? You can talk to the right person and you know, yeah. you get their sympathy and, and, and they'll help you out, right? Yeah. So um, I ended up didn't missing the didn't not miss the date my sophomore year, so then I uh, I, I wrestled as a sophomore. And I was I, I was okay. I was nothing well, special. What but was I the did attraction like though? Well, well, I pro mean, pro wrestling. Oh, pro wrestling. See, I was wondering, either you, you maybe you got bullied, maybe somebody invited no, you. No. What was the attraction? A lot of wrestlers are are, are attracted to wrestling, the sport. Yeah, just because the physicality. of the WWE. Yeah. They just did you go in there and like. Look Where's for the, the ring? Yeah, did you Where's look for the, the ring? ring? <laughs> like, there's no ring. Do we build up to the ring? Do we go to a different facility to work in the ring? What's uh, happening? That's yeah. what I was wondering right now. I was like, did uh, you look yeah, for the ring? Of course. Oh man. So, so uh, yeah, but it was you know wrestling around like yeah, you know, that's fun. And um, my coach, my first year, called me wrong way, wrong way Vasquez. Why is that? Because I would just do things the wrong way, and it would work. So, okay. he, so he, instead of sitting there, he, he always tells me, instead of sitting there and trying to fix you, I just said, go with what you feel. Mm. And it, and it generally worked out. And then, you know, so I, I wrestled in high school. I did pretty good as a, pretty good as a high school wrestler, especially like my improvement from my junior year to senior year was, um, huge because I, I like literally made a commitment to myself to not miss any workouts from, the end of my junior year until my senior year, like I did every Mount Sac College workout from, you know, basically throughout the summer. So you were committed. 100% committed. And uh, what ended up happening was that when I was younger, I, I was not very confident. So I, I, I just, you know, um, my coach told me, you're afraid to win, mm. right? You're afraid to win. And like I thought about that, that hit me like hard. I'm like, I always felt that the other guy should win. So I ended wow. up wrestling throughout the summer. They're better, right? So I ended up wrestling throughout the summer, and and the guys that would go in, they were really good guys, like the best guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, you wrestle these guys every night, twice a week. I think Mondays and Wednesdays, every night, I'd wrestle these guys for two hours. Uh, You end up wrestling them all the time. You become friends. You're homies after, you know, after a few weeks. You're homies. And you're wrestling with these really good guys that are getting you really good, not knowing what's actually happening. So we ended up, uh, I think, I think uh, there was a tournament, like a like one of the first tournaments of the year, my senior year, before we did a tournament. Um, and I see all my buddies are all ranked. Wow. All of them. They're all ranked. They're all ranked. Like, we, not, like, were you going through the list and going, I beat him? I, no, no. I it, it, him. it wasn't even about beating. These are, I, I It wanted, was like, I can compete with these guys. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it was not just that I can compete, but, but I was happy for them, right? Like, okay. I was yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. So then I started thinking, well, wait a minute. These guys are ranked, literally, most of my friends were ranked one and two. One nice. and two, three. And these are guys you spar with all the time. All the time. Like, tit for tat. I'm like, so I should be somewhere in there. And initially, when the, when the you know, the I think it was called Juan's Picks. So initially, 
Juan, this is this this, this guy that, that would follow high school wrestling and he put all the picks for the valley and all the you know. Yeah. So I was I don't think I was on Juan's picks. Um I was on Juan's picks by the end of the year, but I wasn't on Juan's picks. But um uh all my friends were ranked. All my friends were there. And they went to tournaments and they were winning. I'm like, hmm. So then I started competing and then next thing you know, you know, confidence goes like I can't compete with these guys, right? Nice. So um that's how I got into wrestling. Then I got hooked on wrestling. Then, then. Uh, what, when did you figure out that you were good at wrestling? When did you say, I, I can do something with this? Never. Never? You just competed and that's it. Because yeah. I, I have a problem with wrestlers. wrestlers. Most people do. Yeah. <laughs> wrestlers are tough dudes. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I'm in, if I'm in the gym and the guy could be never trained jujitsu in his life. But he can compete. You know, with wrestling alone, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard for them once you get them on their back. They don't like that. But on top, being heavy, wrestling, it's, they're just tough dudes. I just I just look hate the, wrestlers. Look, look at the the, the skill set that it it encourages. Right, great balance. Yeah, you know, don't let, allow your hips to float over. Keep your hips square to the ground. Um, Work hard, a lot of grit, high intensity. Don't give grit. up. Yeah. Like like the, the you're producing. Like I have like I have my daughters and and my daughters have been very princessed like their whole lives and and they think I'm like crazy extreme. Like and and now they're figuring it out. Now that I'm a little, they're a little bit older. They're figuring it out. But they're like you're just so harsh. And I'm like I'm not trying to be harsh. It's just. You just trim the fat and say, right. this is just got, what you got to do. And you got to just suck it up. Yeah. And stop being a whiner. Right. And that's that. And, and just get it done. That's just, that wrestler's mentality. So I started to realize that my daughters would get really pissed at me. And then I listened to Tom Brands and Terry Brands. Who's that? They're, they're, they're uh, Tom Brands, I think, uh, I think he's still the head coach of Iowa. Okay, University okay, of Iowa, okay. just a tough bastard. Yeah. Right? I, uh, Tom Brands, I think, ended up winning Olympic gold. Terry Brands, I think he ended up meddling. I think he got like a silver or, or, or a bronze. I think he got a bronze. Anyways, just tough. So then I'm listening to this guy talk, and, and the way he just cuts out the nonsense, I'm like, that's where I get it from, from wrestling. Just straight up. Just, you know, everybody wants things. Did you have any of that before wrestling? The reason why I um, the reason why I ask is because is wrestling already in a wrestler? You do know what I'm saying? That you know, mentality, that toughness? No, no. I or mean, is it developed? Every, no, I mean, you you struggle. Everybody has the same struggles, you know, holding on to single legs on your knees when you get excited. Everyone has these struggles, and how long you hold on, how hard you keep going, not giving up. Like like a lot of it. It just makes your mind tougher, right? right? There's there's guys that I that I train with and I work with and I teach that right now I am specifically working on them just not mentally quitting. Mm. So I'm just putting them in bad spots, right? And just keeping them there and baking them. And, I, and, I've been there a few times. Yeah, but 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 the kind of thing where every time you escape the position, I figure out a way yeah. to put you right back in the exact same right. position, and. And not panicking and not over breathing and not over exerting and calming the mind and calming the breath. So you're right. not making these mistakes. And then some guys aren't even that tired, but just the constant pressure will make them quit. Wrestlers, it takes longer right, definitely. for that quitting to happen. You can reach that level of uncomfortableness and be able to push through it. But inherently in wrestling, you know, if, if, if it didn't work, you didn't do it hard enough. So you just got to do it even harder next time right? Wow. to make it work. That was kind of the mentality. I, yeah, that's why I say wrestlers are the toughest dudes. Is is wrestling... Harder than MMA. I think it's harder than MMA. Is it, a, is it a good... It's probably the best base for MMA. Would you agree? Smartest base. You, right. You I'm, control the... You dictate where the fight takes place. I mean, I'm looking at great fighters in MMA, and they've all had great, great wrestling bases if you don't have a great wrestling base there's a huge gap in your game even if you have a good guard because okay oh i don't i don't need wrestling i don't need to take anybody down i can knock everybody out and if not i can force them to take me down and i have this great guard yeah but if you need a takedown you can't get it 
Yeah. It's 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 you have to be able to control where the fight takes place. Brian Ortega. When he fought his uh, biggest hole is his wrestling. Right? Trying to take him he couldn't. I mean, take him unbelievable down. guard, unbelievable conditioning, great Striker, boxing. Yeah. He what I would recommend to him is he needs to understand and love wrestling. Yeah. And and that kid will be Phenomenal. Unbelievable. Especially the way he's he, already unbelievable. Especially I, the way he's on the ground. I mean, he just... He, he's already unbelievable. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's got great coaching. He's got, you know, a tough mind. Um, he's a hard worker. You know, he's, he's a great kid. So when you transferred from... Where did that transfer come from? Wrestling, going to Mount Sac, right? Did well at Mount Sac. Um, and then when, yeah. did, when did you say... Oh, I want to go into MMA. Um, I was I had come across. Remember, remember when you used to be able to rent videos at like the Korean place, yeah, or whatever or Chinese what? place or whatever. Yeah. Videos, chicken and donuts. That's you, right. You know what I mean? You get yeah. all all the all little three. Chinese place. Yeah. You know what I so mean? You, so Play video games in there too. Yeah. Whatever you need. I um. There was a curtain. <laughs> a curtain. <laughs> Don't go behind the curtain if you're a little kid, man. Yeah, <laughs> stay some, away. You're going to see some videos and some titles that you don't want to see, yeah. man. I, I so, accidentally walked behind that curtain one time. Yeah, my dad it's me. funny because this this place had, had a curtain. <laughs> um, so I ended up seeing uh, UFC 4, and I had heard of what the UFC was, uh, but um, I'd never seen it. So I rented it. And Hoist beat Dan Severn. I wanted Dan Severn to win because he was a wrestler. I was wrestling. Right. Well, I was wrestling in, in college, and, and I actually could have gone Division One. I. I just didn't want the grind anymore, man. And it was just, I just needed a change. I, I did. Because at that point, you did, what, three years of high school? I did three years of high school, and then Four I. Four years I, of college? I, uh, no, no. I just did, uh, I, I got hurt. About a quarter of the way through my first year, so then I had to. I recovered, came back the next. Uh, I redshirted. I didn't want to wrestle. When I came back, that I had some distractions that that I, I just didn't want to wrestle. That was just one of those times. It was just it was just one of those times, and then I ended up getting remotivated and, and came back and, and did it uh, the, the second year. So basically, you know, two and a half years. Two and a half years. So at that uh, point, you're you're looking at almost six years of. Straight dedication wrestling. Yeah, I mean, and, and when I and what I've realized is when I dedicate myself, I I go full hog. So, um, I if I commit to something, I can I usually commit a lot. So, I don't like to do things half ass. Yeah. All so, out. um, so I wrestled. I did well. I I could have been uh, picked up by two 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 schools and gotten a scholarship, but I. It wasn't just that I didn't want to wrestle. I would have wrestled if I wanted to keep going with school. And I just didn't want to keep going. I was just over. Uh, I got I got my degree from Mount Sac. And I was just, it just, I, I'm like, I had enough. I just didn't want to do it. Right. And, uh, you know, so I was working, you know, a grocery, grocery store job, stocking shelves, and, and just kind of started jujitsu. I, I met a, a friend of mine who was going to Mount Sac to, to learn how to wrestle, who was a, already a, a good purple belt. And uh, we got to talking, and, and he goes, you want to do it? I go, yeah. So I took him down, armbar, took him down, got armbar, took him down, triangle, armbar. I was like, man, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> but, I, but I already knew. Did you knew put I, Hoist and your buddy kind of together and be like, oh, this is what Hoist did, or was yeah. this is the stuff that he's using. He's doing something that I'm not picking up on. You don't feel like you're in danger until you're in danger, right? Like Because in wrestling, right. it's not. It's a totally different feel. It's a totally different right. objective. I'm not saying you can't interlace the two, but when you don't understand that, that there's something different other than wrestling, yeah. because wrestling works so well, um, you don't. You don't know until you know, right? Right. Right. The first time you rolled, how'd that go? It didn't go well. It was, it was the first time everybody rolls. When, when I rolled the first time, I we, we were we were we were sparring, kickboxing. My buddy was like, "Hey, let's let's roll a little bit." I thought it was weird, and then he he kept choking me, and then I was like, "Okay," and then I still thought it was weird because we we're rolling in the garage, and then he goes, "Look, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to kill you. Let's just play this game. Yeah, I'm trying to kill you on the floor." 
And when he said that, I that weirdness went away. You know, I was trying to. People always said, you know, it's, oh, it looks it looks homo or it looks this, it looks that, you know. And then when my buddy said that, it just clicked in my head. He goes, "No, I'm trying to kill you." Yeah, we're trying. We're playing to kill. Yeah, this. You know, so. If if I hold this this choke like three more seconds, you're gonna be out. You know. So I was like, longer than that, but right? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know, three more seconds before yeah, yeah. I after I tapped. You know, and I was like, okay. So Even once I got, than that, yeah. <laughs> Longer than that, but but yeah, but it's it's uh, Eddie Bravo said uh, this is either uh, what did he say like uh, an accident, like accidental stuff, or su- this is either super low level grappling or super high level into like uh, grappling. Okay. He goes, it's it's one or the other, and then we had to figure out which one. Eddie tells these stories. I don't, I, I, I don't I don't know how you hang around with Eddie, man. He's a trip, but it's hilarious. Yeah, he's, 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 he's out a, there. Yeah, he's a great guy. Man. Yeah. So you went from baseball, wrestling, working at the grocery store, <laughs> yeah. and now you found jujitsu. Was it was it an instant love, or was it more, of, or was it more of a thing for you? Like I need to figure this out. Well, you know, it's funny, funny the way my career went, right? Um, when I got out of college, I, uh, my wrestling coach found uh, Rodrigo Madero's gym in La Habra. And uh, it was actually Whittier. And then it moved to La Habra. So we went down there. And Car- it was Carlson Gracie team. High intensity, super athletic. And I would watch the guys. I go, Yeah. This is this is definitely the right place at the right time because that's where my mind was. For people time. that don't understand, Carlson Carlson Gracie came from Carlos, and then the yep. Helio Gracie and those guys, two different styles, right? Two totally different styles, two completely different philosophies. Okay, so you you went to a school that was basically attack mode, attack mode, right? Attack mode. And then if, if you were to ask, how do you escape side mount? They'd be like, why'd they pass your guard? Your guard sucks. Let's go work on your guard. That way, nobody passes. And it made sense, right? It made, it, it made logical sense. Like, and, and when we would do drills, it was like, explode as hard as you can to get out. Okay? That's fine if it works in a timed environment. Okay, right. this is a four-minute fight. This is a five-minute fight. Because you can control your energy. And then at the end of the round have enough to finish or push as hard as you can and just blow out the tank. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What if there's no time? No time. You can't. And the guy's able to hold you there for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. How are you going to get out? What's the strategy now? So, um, yes, that Carlson style worked for years. It worked, I'd say, for about the first 10 years of me doing jiu-jitsu. Um, were you were you sold on that style? I was killing everybody. So that style was that it was it, it benefited you. So you saw some you saw something in that style, it fits you, and that was it. Um, did, did you I, I did, did you just start issues. leaps and bounds? I felt that the combination of wrestling and jujitsu helped um, put you put, a little bit ahead. Put me ahead of of most people, and and I would look at guys and go, "This guy can't stop my takedown," um, and this guy or or it was like. This guy can't stop my takedown, or if I can't take this guy down, he can't touch me off my back, mm. and I'll tap him off my back. So I felt like I had a good enough style to, I can make takedowns difficult. Um, you know, if I wanted to get up, I could. Right. Um, if I wanted to work off my back, I had pretty good punch defense. If, if, if I wanted to, I had great arm bars and triangles at the time. I was athletic. I had a great gas tank. Um the grit okay. from wrestling. Yeah, I was, was already tough, there. Right, I, I knew how to compete. I wouldn't get freaked out because a lot of these guys had never competed. And I've had you know a lot of wrestling, a lot matches, of matches, and I, and and guys were nervous when I was like a blue belt, and I'd just be like, "What are we nervous about here?" Yeah, uh, but because I'd wrestled and competed for so long, after the first cup, maybe I was nervous the first couple of matches because you know you you don't know, um, but after that, like just rolling. How long did it take for you? in jiu-jitsu training and then you finally said MMA well it was it was a different time it was a different time um because we it it wasn't it wasn't MMA 
It wasn't. I mean, there, it was, was it like backyard stuff and just it come to our gym and? No, no, there was no gyms. There was there just, was there was, you know, there was very few jujitsu gyms. Grappling, you know, not that many Brazilians had come. There was no MMA. There, that term wasn't even invented around, yet. Yeah. It was NHB, no holds barred. N H. Right, know that. or pancreas, pancreas, yeah, right, pancreas rules was, was slap rules, right? Last room. So, um, so for me, it started off wrestling, and then I started doing jujitsu, which was submission, and then I did open hand, and then I did oh, so you did open hand, yeah, I did open hand too, okay. So I thought you were. I thought you went to boxing. It, then it, it was boxing. Matter. Yeah, but it didn't matter because my, my game plan wasn't to slap with you. If you sure. can't stop my takedown, it's over. You can't, <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. So all I had to do was was just get to their legs, get them to the wall, lock my hands, and get everybody down. So it was simple. Now, was I doing stand-up along the way? Yes, I was doing stand-up because guys started getting better and better at stopping me from doing that. So I had to get better and better at getting in. At the setup. At the setup. But once I got to the wall, once I got to their legs, Done. it would all go down. And then once I was on the ground, my wrestling and my jiu-jitsu was generally better. When you got into MMA, what was your belt at that time? Where were you ranked? When I MM, well, uh, when I started, like even the slap stuff, yeah. I was a blue belt. Blue belt. So right away, you're just we're doing it. I didn't see a threat in the opponents that were putting being put in front of me. Like I'd have a striker. Okay, no problem. You can't, you can't stop me from taking you down. Like I was at that time, I was still wrestling a lot. I still had two good knees, right? <laughs> so I was taking everybody down. Um, you got a grappler, okay? Try and take me down. <laughs> I'm gonna end up on top of you every time. I'm gonna spawn and end up on top of you. Um, I get taken down. I had great punch defense. I didn't care. I, I didn't mind being on my back. And at the time, there was no stand ups, so they'll leave you there the whole round. So you can work the. Oh, you can just work your game. You can work all round. So stand ups came when stand ups. There, there's been a few changes in MMA that that really changed the dynamic of the sport. Stand ups were one of them. You know? if, if you just put guys 15 minute fight and you can't and you don't stand them up, it's a lot different than three rounds where they're being stood up every right. round and reset every right. round. So you were just smiling the whole time. Yeah, all I needed was three takedowns. Right. That's it. That's all I needed. It's over. And the guy, if he's probably going to get tired. He will get tired. Before I'll, then. I'll, I'll make sure that they're tired yeah. because I'm going to put on a, f- a very fast and aggressive pace. A wrestler's pace. First pro fight. Now, you went 21 pro fights, 16 and 5. And we'll get into some of those particulars there. Uh-huh. But first pro fight, how did that co- how did that come about? Uh, I don't remember which one was my first pro fight. Th- there was... Um, the first time that it was technically a pro fight was probably King of the Cage three, and I fought a a guy who was saying he was a Jiu Jitsu black belt that wasn't trying to. What were you ranked at that time? Uh, probably a brown belt. Brown belt. Per, per, at least purple belt. And this guy was trying to. He was like a Taekwondo guy, and he was trying to. Not let me, oh, if I tell him I'm a black belt, he won't take me down. But I didn't care if you were a black belt, I'm still going to take you down. Oh, so it might have been a bogus black belt here. He was a bogus black belt. <laughs> so I ended up taking him down, and the second I passed it, mounted, he tapped. Wow. So that's where I was like, hmm. So not a great. Uh, that, not a great first one. Not a great first I mean, one. Tur- I mean, turned out, though, that, that my knee was torn. I didn't know that I had torn my ACL. So you already tore, tore, you tore your ACL. So I, I read recently. I didn't know this. I know you tore your ACL in the Alberto Crane fight. For those that don't know out there, that was a title defense. You already had one key in the cage. Mm-hmm. Uh, 145? There, uh, no, 155. 155. There was no 145. Too small. Too small. So 155. You went to the title defense against Alberto Crane, and you fought for three rounds with a torn ACL. Yeah. How? How? Let me ask you this: How and why? What were you thinking at that time? Well, you know how I said that wrestlers are tough and just grin and bear it, grin and bear it, okay. grin and bear it. So at the time, I had already signed UFC contract at home. I just had to win this one fight and I would have been in on UFC your way back in whatever it was, it was like 
2006 maybe no, yeah not 2006 way before that way before that i think um yeah like 2004 2003 so i did not want to lose that contract so i wasn't even that's all that you were thinking about that's the only thing i was thinking about remember complete. remember this wasn't current the ufc no i know where there's like 50 60 shows a year yeah. it was like three three shows a year so to get on on one of those three shows was a big deal that it, it, it was wild to me because i read too that you got recognized in sports illustrated as most inspirational <laughs> uh sporting act or whatever they called yeah. it of the uh, year yeah. and, and, and that's where i read that at, and i was like i knew he had you had torn your acl during that fight because we <laughs> talked about that before but Three rounds is ridiculous. <clears throat> Wasn't by design. Y- yeah. It, was it a close fight? Even with that? I thought I won the fight. I mean, obviously, he he didn't finish. I thought I won the fight. The first round, I tore it, but I still got takedowns. I still landed more shots. The second round, I ended up in bottom. He almost caught me with the guillotine. Third round, I got a takedown. I was on top the whole fight. So, he won. I won the third for sure. There's no way you could have given him the third. I he won the second, right? Yeah. I uh, I can say I lost that round. So it comes down to the first round. Well, who landed more shots in the first round? Who got more takedowns in the first round? I did. So agony but, for three rounds? Or adrenaline uh, that was just running through your yeah. veins. I mean, I, I would I would feel it when it would buckle and I would fall. That's when I would feel it. But and it was, you know, it was a level of exhaustion that I hadn't experienced. It was like I was so exhausted. I think part of it was the altitude. I think part of it was the adrenaline dump. Uh, I thought part of it was the amount of energy in the room. It was an insanely involved crowd. It was the most intense like competition experience. Those days were less like a, a huge new, bar bar room, right? He was no, no. This is this was uh, Santa, Santa. I mean, you know Santa what I mean. Anna but that, that 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 atmosphere of just like hundreds more, but of a bar, of a bar fight where people are just yelling and, and it, 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 crazy it was days. it was by far the most intense fight I'd I'd been. In. I, I fought in front of I think like eight or nine thousand people at least, and there was probably. Three, maybe four grand, or three or four thousand people. Oh, that's in a that, lot. That's a lot of people. In, in that. Come, coming yeah, but, from, but it was it was it was packed. It was packed. That's what it I was mean. Packed. So the, so the the sound and and the energy was so hot. It was over the top. Nothing you experienced before. No, and and you have to stay focused because and remember everything was against me because I was fighting the hometown guy. Yeah. So anything that I would do or that he would do, it would get this. You know what I mean? Huge right. pop. So you got to kind of phase that out and focus on what's going on and not let that draw your attention. Yeah, we're talking like you probably wrestled in front of hundreds. No, it's thousands. So it's big, big change from, and then you got people that are probably booing you on, on his side and all that Dude, stuff, right? Everybody was booing. Everybody. It was it was a completely lopsided. So in those days, or I should ask you this. How did you get the name Showtime? Because uh, I asked this because there's a there's a particular fighter out there right now that calls himself Showtime, but the OGs know that uh, there's there the, there's one Showtime. It's a guy that wore pink shorts and had blonde bleach hair. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, um, I wish he'd bleach the hair again and and leave the little flip on on the end there. No, I, it would look dope. I'm, uh, let's, let's let's try it after. <laughs> no, I'm good. So how did you get the name Showtime? My my old training partner gave it to me. And uh, I was filling out, like, the information for him before I fight out there. And uh, I'm like, what's my nickname? Showtime. Because when you fight, it's Showtime. Okay. So I just put it on there. And, and it ended up sticking. And then the, the first time I, I bleached my hair and, and wore the shorts, it was a dare. And then when I saw the response of how many people remember that. Yeah. And everybody remembers that. To, if Even if... if, if if I tell people I train with Javier Vasquez and they're like, who's that? I go, oh, he used to fight, you know, UFC, WC, King of the Cage. And they're like, oh, it sounds familiar. You know, pink shorts, blonde bleach hair, Cuban guy. Oh, yeah, I remember that dude. Sick jujitsu. That's what everybody says. That's how they remember you. Yeah. So Showtime. They don't came- even remember that I wrestled. Yeah. Just jujitsu. Just jujitsu. So Showtime came about almost. I mean, I mean, they say the best nicknames are the ones people give you. So you're it's not stuck. supposed to nickname yourself. Well, your friend told you though. That's what I'm saying. Your yeah, friend yeah, said, yeah. 
be called Showtime because it, when you re, when you compete, it's Showtime. Yeah, but I don't get I don't get guys that I don't really see themselves. you calling your. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't see you calling yourself Showtime. It had to be somebody to tell you. That's what I'm saying. The best nicknames are when somebody gives it to you. Yeah, that's the way I've it's gave, supposed to be. You know the way I am in the gym. I've gave plenty of guys nicknames. Oh, so have I. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it just sticks. Stretch. You know what Stretch, I mean? Yeah. You know, all these guys, different names, but you know. Eric, we don't just call him Eric, CHP Eric. You know, you, oh, CHP Eric. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Eric, Eric. No, don't know. CHP Eric. God, CH, got it. Mex- Anthony. Mexapino. Mexapino. Right? So we, we, always, we always come up with these, yeah. with these names for people. What, 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 which one, Cal? What do you got? Man Dime. No, see, that was a bad nickname. Guy in the gym called himself Called himself Man No, Dye. no, no. Who gave him that? You didn't give no, him that name. Who gave him that name? It was Dirk Diggler, Dan Nolan. Oh, Big Dan. Big, Big Dan, Dan gave him that name. Yeah. Yeah, Man Dime. Yeah, that was... I never called him Man Dime. I called him... I, Ma- care. I called him Man Penny or something <laughs> like that. It wasn't a Man Dime, though. But yeah, good yeah, kid, yeah. though. I love that dude. So, MMA. Why did you continue to fight? Because, and the reason why I'm asking you is because the pay sucks. <laughs> I, I, it and, did, it did. It's in, the, in, in those days, it sucked. Because let me give a breakdown. Let's say let's say now's pay, right? And, and, and it's published. We, we can look up people's pay. But let's say I got a regular guy, just not, not, maybe not even a contender. Let's say, you know, uh, not a gatekeeper, but working his way up through the ranks. Let's say this guy gets 50. 50 Gs. 25 and 25? Or 50 and 50? 50, 50 Gs for this one guy, right? Let's say one guy gets 50 Gs. Well, is that... 50 and 50 no, no, no. or 25 like, and 25? Like, let's say, let's say, well, now they pay separate. They don't pay the same to both guys, right? Well, I, I saw Cowboy the other day. He got like, I think it was like 250 and I, I forgot who he had competed. With, and they were like, I think they were like $75,000. Well, it, it, so who's the draw, right? That's how they pay uh, these guys now. Yeah, but they're all, it's also broken up into to show and to win. To show and to win. So, yeah, but in your days, did you have show and to win too? Yeah. So show and to win. Let's say now though. Let's say a guy gets 50 G's, okay? Break that down to me, wh- where that goes really quick for a fighter. I mean, well, you would have to pay whatever taxes off of 40% that. here in CA. Yeah. Uh, so what does that leave you with? That's 40%. That's what, 35? 30. 30? Yeah. Okay. Then you have to pay to your management's usually ten percent, so that's five grand. Sure. So that's uh, twenty five. Your trainer, fifteen. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to pay your gym and your trainer at the back in the day. Like most guys, like would, I didn't agree with it, but guys would train for free, and then whatever they would get on fights, they would pay ten percent or whatever. So you figure that's another twenty five so, to. So yeah, trainer's fees is usually ten percent. Okay, so off the top, there's another that's five grand, uh, right? Uh, no, ten percent would be twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred off the okay off the cut already. Uh, so you're no, like, no five grand, five yeah, grand off five the grand. off the big check. Yeah, off the big check. Yeah. So now you're down to twenty. Twenty. Um. Then any. Did you have to you pay know, for your own that, expenses? That, 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 no, no, not now. No, not no. You wouldn't have to pay then for either. your flight okay. or your okay. hotel, but you you were, had to pay for your own food. She, three meals a day. So you're you're fighting, you're training for twelve that, weeks. Dude, you're saying fifty. Who's getting fifty? The, I, I've seen some pe- people now get Not fifty. The, oh, no, no, guys are getting fifty. Yeah. But if you're wa- if walking into the, you got to build up to fifty. You're not just walking. Oh no no, in no, no, no. You, yeah, you're not. You're not getting. How 50. many? I mean, these I'm guys. Just, who make, I'm just saying, maybe a guy working up the ranks had a couple of good fights, got a little draw, maybe not a contender six, just yet. Seven fights in the UFC, six seven fights. Yeah. That's when you start making about fifty. That's a lot. It's a lot of fights. So, so, so why, why would a guy want to do that for a living? You know, uh, my because in your day, what was your what was your biggest payday? Less than thirty. Less than thirty, and it was I was gone. I mean, you're right on thirty, probably close to thirty. Yeah, fast. not much, not much, not much. I, especially I, I was fighting top guys, right? So, but why would why would a guy put so much at risk? Um, d- different reasons. For the love, reasons. for for they love to fight. They. Some guys don't want to have a regular job. Some guys 
um, don't know what else to do. They, they, they were gym raps their whole life. Now life is hitting them. Like, how, how do I make money? You, you, you go fight. Um, some guys, you know, ego and fame. Some guys just want to make money. Some guys want to just try it. You know, um, you got you get some guys that fight forever and probably way longer than they should have. Yeah, get- some some guys are really good, and and then you put them out in front of a crowd and they fall apart. Because because I've seen you, other than your knee issue, you never really got beat up. Tried not to. Yeah, and twenty one fights, I I don't remember you getting thrashed, and you were in there with some heavy hitters. I mean. Yeah, but I wasn't hitting heavy with them. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying, though. They, they, I just they, didn't fight dumb, man. I, that it, for me, it was, it was, it was. Don't fight dumb. Don't get knocked out. You can anything with those little gloves can hurt you and knock you out. And in those days, nobody was covering any medical past that night, right? I mean, no, they, there's they no testing. Up, done. No, not just that. There's no testing, so everybody was on something. On something. So, so coke. Uh, no, I don't okay. Think so. But just definitely some, supplements juice. are being yeah supplements yeah. are being used at the time. There's no regulation. It's just I did I did it because I want I liked competing. I was good at competing, and I didn't think anybody can beat me. That, that's why I did it. I mean, and and I was willing to put myself on the line to see if I can if I was right or if I was wrong. You know, and, and, and most of the time I was right. Um, you know, and and the and the and the few times that I, where I was wrong, I I, I don't think i fought bad i think i i won most of those fights so yeah i, I remember in particular too uh, the mendez fight so the mendez fight i think there was very few people in in those days that and this was in the wc days that understood that you can win off your back or fighting from the bottom as you call it right because for the the untrained eye, i guess the person that doesn't train you on your back is you losing, right, in those days. Now, you see a guy, and he's hitting, he's controlling, he's comfortable on the bottom. You fought the Chad Mendes fight just like that, comfortable from the bottom. I thought you won that fight. But I think because a lot of untrained eyes were watching the fight, oh, you look at him, he, he's he's on the bottom. Uh, I think I think, I think think it's um, there's multiple things. So, the way, and, and, and I've realized this over the past several years when I really stood back and, and, and now that the UFC has so many shows, it's easy kind of to see how they match guys up. Uh, back in the day when there was fewer shows, it, it kind of was, they still had the internal matching system inside, but you really couldn't, you didn't really understand it. Now that you see so many shows and you start following guys and who they're getting paired up with, you get it. Right. And Mendez was a prospect and I was a veteran. And I thought I could beat Mendes. That's why I took the fight. I'm not going to just take a fight just to, you know, have a guy build off of my name. I thought I could win the fight. I thought I, I thought I, uh, I fought well. I thought the fight was a lot closer than what the judging said. I thought so too. I, I, I even thought so you too. know, but uh, um, I would have, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I would have run my career much different, knowing what I know now, but. Um, Everything was set up. Not, I'm not going to say everything was set up for him to win, but that's the direction the company would have rather gone. Yeah, he was he was in that little camp of, you know, those guys, al- yeah. alpha male that's, dudes. That's fine, it. though. They, they have yeah. a relationship with, with Uriah. and yeah, they, Like I said, the, the, you can kind of tell who the UFC wants to win, who, who they that, see more potential in. Especially but, in the um, early days. Especially in those days. I, 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 I think they were, they, that's when they first started developing these camps. You know, you get... The a, AKA, you know, you know the alpha male these these camps and they, there's there's kind of a stable of guys that come out with those things and I, and I think maybe that played a role. Uh, there was multiple, I right? Think, I think there was multiple facets, you know. And you were just kind of. I was at the end of my career. I didn't know how many more fights I wanted to do. I, I was already in that place where where I was in, with wrestling. I, I was just like. Was the knee still bothering? Yeah, my knee was thrash. Super thrashed. Um, had huge, lots of atrophy, lots of pain, constant blow ups. Like, but it wasn't like you know, if I would have taken my nutrition seriously, then it would have helped a lot more. But you know, um, I was just over it. I just done. Yeah, I had retired. I think like 
two other times. And it was like the first time I blew my knee back to back, and I was like, I'm done. That's Were you already it. teaching? And and and, and oh, kind of yeah, I've been teaching since I was eighteen. Because you were a coach at a, a royal. I was a, a coach bit. at a royal. I coached uh, kids wrestling. I, so I, that was more what you're you're like, make a living doing this. Well, you got to remember, like coaching gigs, like you got to be a teacher. You got to you have to have a, at least uh, I think a master's. Um, so I, and I didn't want to go back to school. And I'm like, ah, do I really want to be a teacher? I'm like, I don't want to be a teacher. But I like the coaching coaching gig. part of it. I like the coaching gig. And 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 if I had gotten uh you know, if I did want to become a teacher, it is you know, when when schools are hiring, of course, if you have a high level wrestler and if you have two guys and one guy is just this brilliant academic and then you got this other guy who's who's good enough at the academics but he's also a really good coach, who are you going to hire? The guy that yeah, you have you bring more to the table. Right. So but I just didn't want to. I, I didn't see a path in teaching. And, um, and and falling in love with teaching was not something that I had initially either. So came later. It came later because I, I was teaching just to get training partners, just to get bodies in the room. Just bodies. And I would go as hard as I could with my guys. And I wasn't killing anybody or hurting anybody like super crazy. But, but I, was, I would go super hard. But it wasn't, if you got the move, great. If you didn't get the move, we're then moving next on. time, we're moving on. Like, now I'm, like, a little bit more like, here, let me show you how to get the move. Yeah. And now I understand how to explain things to get guys to be able to do things. So when you came to the end of the career, I, I think uh, Joe Stevenson was last fight. Who I didn't want to fight. You, didn't want, you knew him, right? You knew him outside? Trained with him yeah, before? Yeah, we're cool. No, we never trained, but I have no interest in fighting Joe. Going into that fight, where you just let me get this out of the way, and this is going to be the end. Did you know that was the end, and you're going to just go on yeah. to teach and coach? Uh, yeah, I was. I definitely didn't want to keep fighting. Because that was a, that was a great card. Yeah, that was a great card. The, the squeeze was not worth the juice mm. for me because I beat Joe. They, they and they, they offered me a couple of fights. The guys I wanted to fight, they wouldn't give me. And then they were just giving me guys who were tough. Not that I couldn't beat them, but the squeeze wasn't ju- worth the juice. Right. Because you know? you're talking about 12 weeks of training. Yeah. Ready at least just... eight, to, eight to 12 weeks. And just to, for what? For for a, a, a small paycheck and, and, and fighting really tough guys. And it's like there's certain guys that are, you keep certain guys away from guys, you know? Right. So, so there's several guys at the time that weren't raising their hand to fight me at the time because I was a bad style matcher for them. And I was older already. I was already in my 30s. Like, do you want to throw these right. striking prospects that are exciting against me who's going to take them down and choke them? Like, they're going to protect certain guys. Sure. Style matchups, right? Style, so, style, styles is everything. Yeah. I mean, you can be really good against somebody and beat him. And then lose to somebody else, and that guy beats him. Yeah, I mean, it's just styles. styles. I, I learned that early on. Like it just sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Uh, it does make sense. It's it's. it's I mean, in your mind, if you're if you're beating this guy and that guy beats him, and you lose to that guy, it just you're, you're, in your how mind. How did the fight go? How did the yeah. fight go? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, how did the fight go? Right. There's so many options of winning. It does make sense because. When I looked at an opponent, I always looked at where they were weak. I'm like, that's the first obvious glaring hole. And if they were strong everywhere, where they the weakest, and then we chip away at figuring out how they're stopping at that weak point, and you just bypass that, and boom. Especially if they lost a couple of fights, you watch those fights, get a little. It's easier. It's easier to dissect off of losses, right? Yeah. It's easier to dissect. Some off guys of will give you a big clue. Each fight, this guy's just some horrible. Guys, at some this. guys just have glaring holes, you know. Now it's a little bit different because guys understand there's a lot of aspects to fighting. So guys understand how to stand up really good. They have good firepower. They have great conditioning. They have the ability to stand up from the bottom. They have the ability to stop takedowns. Um, you really have to flow um, very smoothly. Have great defense. Have great footwork. Be able to. Get guys, be able to set guys up for even the little things like little foot sweeps, right. like um, 
be able to really hold guys down with good control. Um, if you're on the bottom, be able to neutralize punches, be able to get to the fence, be able to get up off the, the ground. So there's 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 a basic prototype of, 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 of a modern day MMA fighter. Their level of consciousness might be, you know, you know, stronger in some aspects, but there's there's very few specialists. Right. Specialists are dangerous because um, maybe you're Damian Maya. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're a good black belt on the ground, but you're not Damian Maya on the ground because there's levels yeah. to every. There's levels to right. that game. You might be um, really good at stand up, um, but then you have Israel. Right, Adesanya, who who who's exceptional at, at that at one thing, right? So specialist, um, I still feel they have to they, they still have a huge advantage, but the levels of the guys who aren't specialists, you know, it's getting from six to seven at every level, right? So, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's just getting tougher, but being a specialist still helps. Yeah, being good at one. I thing. think. I think. I think being a specialist is is, is dangerous. It, it it's the ace in the whole. It's an ace up your sleeve. Right. It's like it's like being good at one particular move in the gym, and you know, you can catch everybody, everybody with that move. They know it's coming, and you can still. Get and that's like a tall, long kid. You know what do you tell him? Uh, you should go for triangles, man, because your legs are just long. Your arms are long. Work on this all day, every yeah. night, and you're gonna get everybody in this gym. Yep. And once they figure out that concept, they're just killing everybody. And you know it's coming, and you can't stop it. That's the worst part, I think, about it. You know yeah. it's coming, you can't stop this person. Or from they're it. laughing as, as they're yeah. doing it. They're setting you up three <laughs> steps ahead. Because because for me, I, I try to set you up way ahead. I'm not. Right. By the time I get it, you were, you were caught way back when. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just kind of didn't show my hand until the very end. But, yeah, you were, you were gone. Right. I already know what you're going to do. Let's, let's switch gears here with train. I get this a lot with training with different things, uh, 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 you know, boxing, kickboxing, jujitsu. When somebody sees that you train, whether on the Inst- Instagram, whatever they, th- people have a mentality. They think that people that train are looking for a fight or want to fight. And, and when I tell people, you know, you're avoiding a fight when you know how to fight, you're avoiding a fight at any any cost. I, I mean, is that true? I mean, people think that you're just out there, that street fight, and, and you're just looking for a fight to fight somebody. And when I tell them that, no, it's it's not that. You're not looking for that. You're you're fine with perfectly fine with walking away. I think the reason why people that do jujitsu and fighting and MMA and boxing aren't getting into a lot of street fights, the vast majority of them, is because they are getting their fighting fixed in the gym. Mm-hmm. So. When you have all this aggression and all this anger and all this frustration, you're not, and you don't have a way to now blow we, it off, then you blow it off. I, I, I always felt like you, when, part of fighting, street fighting, I should say, is a lot of pride, stupidity, and a lot of pride, right? So s- somebody calls you out when you know how to fight and you know, like, I can hurt this guy. I always feel like you're okay with walking away. It's when you. It's when you what don't do got to prove. Yeah. What do you got to prove? If I walk away, I'm, I don't have to go home and constantly think about, you know, I should have uh, I should have did this to this guy. I should have showed him. You're just like, nah, I'm good. And I always think that's part of knowing how to fight is that yeah. you're okay with walking away. The other part is when you don't know how to fight and you feel that you have to prove it every single time. I think that plays a role in the, in the pride and the psyche of a guy in the street. You, yeah, you have to understand why guys are trying to fight, right? Like, maybe you had a bad day. Maybe there's guys out there that have a bad day. They just snap at the end and whatever, you know? Um, then there's guys who try to bully other people, and most people cower. But then there's some guys that won't, right? Like, right. You want to fight? We can fight. Probably not going to go great for you. But what is that going to prove? Yeah. Like... What, what are we fighting for, right? Um, and then there's just some people that just get attacked. I've just, I've yeah, been, well, I've just been attacked. I, I mean, you know getting I mean? attacked is totally a different story. Right. Yeah, but, but, what, what was your last street fight? Or let's say altercation, because I doubt no, it. The guy, the guy tried to punch me. 
Uh, it's been a it's been a few years. I mean, that must be like. I mean, uh, they, they weird. Were, they, yeah, the the person was instigated by some by somebody else, and then, um, they thought it was me, and then they just came up to me and try th- try to throw a punch at me. Like, all right. How did that end? With him sleeping. What'd you do? Uh, he 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 threw a punch. Wild, wild, wild punch came from yeah, way back here. Yeah, I mean, I don't even remember. I just know that I just slipped and got to his legs, and he was like trying to choke my neck when he didn't have anything. He had arm, had my neck and my arm, and he was like squeezing like super hard. So I just kind of waited for him to stop squeezing, and then um, took him down and ended up like in, kind of in a headlock. So he ended up turning his back and. It was pretty basic. It wasn't. It wasn't. I didn't hit the guy. I didn't. Done. Over. Easy work. I'm. I'm not there to hurt people. I'm not. Right. It's not my intention. No. Like, um, even even when I fought, I wasn't one of these guys that enjoyed hurting people. Like, like it brought. Uh, you know, I just, I'm gonna hurt them. I'm gonna break their right. face. I just wanted to compete. I just wanted to get my hand one, uh, raised and move on with my day. The guy attacked me. I just wanted to get to his back and choke him and move on with my day. That's it. What What would be your advice? I know you do a lot of. Uh, self defense classes, women's self defense. You know, for for men, what's your advice if there's an altercation and the guy is just in your face? I know, I I know well, the answer, but most people ask that question. They go, "So what do I do? What what, what do I need to do?" Well, I mean, there's there's several things like keep your distance. Distance is a key, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're sitting down and the person sitting up above you, understand how to make distance. And make this and, and keep it right. You make distance, you keep distance. If the guy grabs you, understand how to clear and maintain distance or clinch, right? Or shoot, get to the legs. Understand where's my back? Is my back against the wall? Now I can't move backwards. Now I can only move side to side. Awareness is huge. Awareness, right? Um, understanding what I call the magnetic field. Like when somebody's too close to you, you can feel their energy yes. right there. Understanding how to keep them outside of the magnetic field. I've always told Cam, especially when he was in high school. And he's pretty. Yeah, he's a good looking kid, right? <laughs> don't, don't, don't ruin that face there, man. But I, told, I, I would always tell Cam, look, man, if kids are coming up to you, there's a group, they have their phones out, and the guy's getting up to you in your face, right? He's walk. you never let the guy get to your face. Right, it's it's it, it, the old school days. I'm I'm sure you had a, at a royal a few times and the cholo right in your face, you know the the pushing each other with it. It's the intimidation, I, I, it, right? It, it is the intimidation. But the whole thing was is you have no room. So any anybody that it has no skill has the potential to knock you out if you allow them to get that close, right? And I would tell Cam, you, it's always space, hands up, non threatening, but you're ready. Yeah, I mean, I I got I got sucker punched when I I was a bouncer for like several years, and um, where um, where were you a bouncer at? I was a bouncer Cause, cause, like, at Godfather's at Margaritaville back when it was uh, open. A bouncer. Mm-hmm. I I mean, what, what was what? I mean, because I I'm, stayed back. I, man. I know bouncers and I know security guys, and they're like six six. My friend Big Mel is like six six. Huge. I would. I would. Just, I would literally tell people, "Look, bro. Wait, who would hire you? That's the thing. My I, fight manager. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah. So, so if you, I would. I would literally tell people, "Look, bro. If I seen your application, I would five seven. Yeah, one thirty five. <laughs> Next. <laughs> no, it wasn't one thirty five, but I was like one sixty. All right. But I mean, I would literally tell guys, "Look, bro." They told me that they told me to come over here and, to, and, and and I just need you to look, man, you're way bigger, you're way stronger. Can you just come outside for a minute? Like, I, listen, I don't want you to do anything to Okay. Me. So you use a little bit of your mind. Yeah, so then I'd walk him outside and uh I tell the bouncer, if he wants to see me, call me. I would just go back in the club. And the guy, ah, oh, because if it wasn't for the little Mexican guy, <laughs> that dude's cool. But if he wasn't cool, okay. if he wasn't cool, I'd beat his ass. And he's like, what little, me- the bouncer, the- this guy was, George was like 
four hundred pounds, dude. Okay. He was like three eighty, and he's probably six. Yeah, your typical six, bouncer, like a big bouncer. Yeah, with little Mexican, oh, the little man, like with the blonde hair, the blonde right, hair, right? And he's like, dude. What did he tell you to get you out here? Oh, because he 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 knew he knew he you know he knew who I was. He knew I was dangerous. He knew I was too dangerous for him. He goes, dude, that guy will <laughs> choke your ass out whenever he wants. He did just didn't want to drag you out here by your neck. Gee, that's what I would do. I would just choke guys and drag them out and done. It's easier. Done, and, and then then you would probably catch him off guard big time. I mean, I would see you and I'd be like, oh, this little guy, what's he gonna do to me? And then you just come, just choke, and then I, drag me out. Listen, I, I I wasn't, I was just there to get the job done, man. I was just there, like I I wasn't anything, any altercation. I would just immediately choke, and then drag. Right. It, it just makes it easier. Yeah. It would just make it easier. Like I don't know if that's politically correct to say that now. Choke and I mean, drag. That's the way I would do it. Like because it's way more dangerous to be fighting with a guy, trying to hug him. Right. Guy grabs a bottle, hits you on the head with a bottle, and, and it's safer for the guy, it's right? Safer for everybody, right? It's safer. I, for I everybody. think a lot of people don't realize that. You know, we have the cop issue and all this stuff. A lot of them don't have training. We understand that, but the best train is a good, solid choke, right? To to put somebody. They don't down. even know. I'm. I'm. They don't even know. Yeah. They don't even know. By the time they realize they're outside, the door's closed. And this is a done deal. Every Go home and, and everybody's fine. It's safer. Fine. It really is safer, man. But I, I've been I've been choked out before. You wake up, you're a little embarrassed, but you're still alive, and that's it. Paul Paul Pingoy. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Yeah, and, and you're doing it. You're not doing it by knocking guys out. The second you start hitting people, you know, they're going to press charges, but they yeah. don't even remember. They don't even realize what happened. Those people right. don't even realize. Plus, they're drunk. And, and they're, they're, else. they're a little embarrassed. If I have this guy, 5'7", choked me out, I, I'm not really going to call the police if I'm a big They don't dude. even know. They don't yeah. even know. They don't even know. Stealthy. It's like a ninja. What is your fighting mentality? If you can break your fighting mentality down, what is it? Don't get hit. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. If you don't get hit, you stay calm. You're always in the fight. You're aware. You understand how to defend. Hard. If you make yourself hard to finish, you're always in the fight. Mm. So, um, fight smart. Get in, get out. Don't get flashy. Don't get consumed with a knockout. If the, if a knockout happens, great. But I don't care. I never cared how I won. I just needed to get the job done. I wanted to finish. Of course you want to finish, but I wasn't there to hurt people. I wasn't there to, to inflict pain. Like that must be, it, it that's probably my, weird for the regular guy to understand that. Like, yeah, right. I, I don't know. He doesn't I, want to inflict pain. He's, he's in I, the fight game. Listen, when, when, when you become emotional and you try to inflict pain, it takes so much more energy than that's if good. you're just yeah. boom, 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 boom. For me, it's, it's a, it's Nobody a, fights a machine. Nobody fights emotional, right? Yeah, I, I mean it's very, very. Street even, fights are emotion. E- e- yeah, even athletes, right? Re- re- basketball players, whatever. There's very few guys that when they get mad they play better. There's very few fighters that when they get mad they fight better. Uh, I think there are some that that harness well. Um, I, I was able to to harness and be able to really focus on the strategy. It wasn't rage that I was fighting with. Right. I would conserve the rage and 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 use that towards a strategic and means to an end because I think that's why. Guys get knocked out. They become emotional. They become overcommitted. They become um, overly aggressive, and they get caught. Right, and then they're upset. Oh, I should have. I should have maintained control. I always tried to maintain control. Emotion plays a big role anytime. It right? helps. I mean, listen. I, I I was I was. It was right. Because your emotions put you everywhere. Your mind everywhere. It, it, I just it, suppress, suppress, suppress. I think it's good in some ways in life. I think it's not so good in others. And I'm starting to learn the difference. Because yeah. I would just always suppress. Suppress the fear. Suppress the anxiety. Suppress it, suppress it, suppress it. Just focus, focus, focus on the... That's how I would, that's how I would get through I mean, there's it. some emotions. Some emotions you have to deal with. So- I, had a, I had this weird... I, I would go through this weird... Um, um, ritual in the back and I couldn't help it and I couldn't trigger it and I couldn't stop it when it was happening I could feel it I I would I would become uh, the anxiety would you know you try to focus and suppress you try to focus and suppress and and what would happen was 
I would be consumed with emotion and just start bawling mm. uncontrollably and then it would stop. Boom. And there would be times where I think it was Jared or one of my corner and my buddy Jared, Jared Lightswitch, um, came up to Romy. Is he all right? And he's like, Romy would be like looking at the clock. He's right on schedule. Wow. And he's like, watch what happens. Boom. I'd be walking out with tears still and I would wipe off and it would just. It's a weird ritual, man. It wasn't me that was in charge. Wow. Crazy. But I, I would see very big name guys. Do the same thing? No, nobody did, did what I did like that, but you see them freaking out, crying. Names that you would like, that guy? And you're just like, everyone's afraid. Everyone's afraid because it's real. It's yeah. real. We're not. This isn't scripted. Like, so, so is a guy, a, a fighter that's, be a highlight? <laughs> is, a, is a fighter that says he's not afraid? I, th- I think, um, I, I think you're he, not, af- I, I are you so. more afraid, more afraid to lose? Fear is fear. There's fear. Whether you're afraid to lose, whether you're afraid of the guy, whether you're, you can't be afraid of the guy. You can't be afraid. Mm. You have to respect what they bring to the table, but you can't be afraid of them. You have to believe. You have to. Your mind has to have a path to victory. It's just not as you're going to victory. It just it just happens. No, there, there has to be an absolute path to right. victory. Preparation. That I mean, that I think that's a lot of professional athletes, fighters especially. I I think they have another gear that normal people don't understand oh that's for sure i mean it, it's for sure. it, it, I mean, I, people I, are fragile the average person's pretty fragile like if you get into a fight i remember like get, being in the room with guys and just un- i didn't always have great control so and there was no supervision back in the day so i had one speed i would tee off on guys as hard as I could blasting guys as hard as I could and it didn't affect them do you really want to continue to blast them so you exhaust yourself and they're still there wow no the second I would blast somebody oh your head's hard great then I would start digging to the body I'd start looking for body shots to slow them down to eventually get to their legs. Like I would create diversions, but what did I really want? I wanted to get to your legs and take you down. Same thing. I just got really good at creating all of these diversions to get you to fire back. Never once do you say, Oh, I never really got beat up. Why wouldn't guys unload on me? Because I would take them down. And the, the last thing they wanted was me on top. So people would fight at my level. It wasn't that my stand-up was that great. It wasn't that I was that great of a fighter, but people were so afraid of, of, of the of the consequences. Throwing a kick, take down. I'll catch it catch every it. time. I was great yeah. at catching kicks, right? So guys would, they're, even though they would be higher level strikers, they would have to tone it down because they couldn't overcommit. And all of a sudden, my average stand-up looked a lot better because of that fear. The guys would not unload. Guys would throw one punch, two punches at a time at me. They weren't throwing, they weren't, rushing across and trying to knock me out because I would just duck, lock my hands, take them down. So that's what being a specialist specialist is about. That makes it, makes it easier. Now you had one fight recently. I would say it's been a couple of years now, maybe. What for? The fight, probably the main fight oh, you ever had. Oh, and I, I, I would fight. say th- th- this is probably uh you fight against cancer. You had colon cancer. How'd that happen? <laughs> I mean, how did you find out you had colon cancer? Uh, you know, I was I was traveling, and, and there'd been a couple times. That, like, you know, when you're not in your body, you're not in your body, right? Like, you're not just... There's signs, and there's warnings, and you just kind of either ignore them or you don't. And I ignored, ignored, suppress, 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 suppress. And, Once again, uh, they came up with suppressing. Yeah, so um, 
I was traveling and I, and it seemed like it was happening when I was traveling and I'd come back and I'd just just extreme pain, like abdominal pain and then uh it happened a couple times and it, and it was always happening when I was traveling. And then it happened uh when I was home. And I'm like, "Well, you think that was cuz of the plane maybe?" I thought it was because of the plane, the pressure, the diet yeah. it was different when I was traveling. That's what I thought, the plane pressure right yeah so i got home and i was just uh, just healing over in pain just and then it would go in these waves it was just sucks man and so i went to the hospital and they uh <laughs> they uh had to clear the pipes so they cleared the pipes and i'm like oh my god i feel so much better okay thank you so much now they're like, no, no, no. Oh, you thought you were done? I thought I was done. They're Oof. like, no, no, no. They're like, you're going to stay the night. I don't think I'd ever stayed the night in a hospital at that time. Uh, I always went home. Did you, did, you, did you get emotional? No. Not yet? No. You were just, okay, we're, that's fine. No big deal? No. I was like, no. We need to see what caused it. I go, that's a great idea. Okay. So that so made you're, sense You're not to sweating me. it yet? No, so I'm not sweating it. So then I had a colonoscopy the next day. They observed me overnight, made sure I was okay. And then the first thing in the morning, I had to do a colonoscopy. My doctor comes in. I like this doctor. This doctor was actually one of the ones I liked. And uh, she's like, well, we found the tumor. Oh, man. Okay. Still and not sweating it. No. Tumor. Okay. No big deal. Okay. Great. Take it out. So, okay. So, yeah, and, and we think it's cancer. I was like, come on. It's what you know? I'm like, I'm like, no. Denial. I'm, no, no, no. I'm like, what are the chances? Okay. 80, give me a percentage. She goes like 80, 20. I go, see what I mean? She goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 80% it is. 80% <laughs> it is. That's the way you think. So, so then I was like, okay, so yeah, no way. Still, um, still. So this was like a, I went in there like on a Saturday afternoon. Is, is, is this the, the, the wrestler emotion? Uh, fighter emotion coming up there like was no i didn't understand how you can get it like it made no sense you were a healthy dude yeah i was a healthy guy so i thought so so went home and they're like they took a biopsy they sent it out to the lab well we'll get the results for like two days so monday tuesday i get the call they're like yep and i'm like Okay, so how do you fix it? That was the first thing. How do you fix it? That was literally the first thing I said. Well, you have to have surgery. <laughs> they gloss over the surgery part. That surgery sucks. It, yeah. It is. You're beat up. Highly painful. Highly painful. That was, I've had 20 surgeries in my life. At least, at least 20. 17, 18, 20 surgeries, 22 surgeries. Somewhere in that ballpark. Wow. Man, this one was. Pain wise, this one. So you're still, you're still okay. Surgery, no surgery. No I've problem. had twenty. No I've big had deal. Twenty, no big deal. So I woke up and yeah, you know, I had to walk and it was just. Did they it get was, it all out? Yeah, they just they yeah, but you know your your colon goes uh, ascending, transverse, and descending. So it was on the descending side, right near the end problem was probably the worst part right or the worst place it could be well it could be it could have been because they're like if we're not able to because of the positioning of my hip if your hip is too narrow you're gonna have to have a colostomy bag for the rest of your life don't tell me wrestling putting your hips down made it too narrow i don't know no 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 so okay <laughs> well i don't have a, i don't have a bag so it, so i ended up uh the first thing, the second I woke up, everything's. I checked to see if I had a bag. Okay, that was my biggest concern. That's scary. So I get up and it's, it's, recovery is rough, man. A couple weeks, a few weeks. So they get it out, they reconnect it. They reconnect it. And you're uh, you're, I, you're thrashed. I'm pretty thrashed. Are you worried at this time? No. Still not. I'm like, 
surgery's done. I, I was already going to plan on redoing my diet. I was already kind of looking into the, you know, nutritional therapy. And um, then they're like, yeah, you got to do chemo. And I was like, chemo? And that was like pretty hard. I'm like, I'm so not. this is, the, the, the chemo was to prevent it from because coming it back? Was sta- because it was stage three, they removed the, if it was stage two, they could have removed it. And that would have done pretty much been it. And nobody finds stage one or stage two. I mean, stage one and two is very rare, rare right? So, yeah. You, stage two. Yeah. Stage one is harder. Stage two is more. Stage three is when uh, it goes into the lymph nodes. So now it can be throughout the whole system. Now it's like, the, now you got to get the, now they got the, the, the mentality of traditional Western medicine is to poison everything to kill everything. And then your body will recover after. Oof. It's like it's like taking in bleach. So for a healthy everything. guy, always looked out for his health, took care of himself really well, in shape. Now they're saying you say want I, chemo. I wouldn't say that I took care of my health. I, I you know, I, I jokingly say I won two world championships eating Del Taco and Taco Bell. Really? But yeah. Seriously, I, but, but I but I seriously did. I, see, I don't know that hobby. That's I think that's the thing. I I, uh, I never really fast convenient food, man. It was it was I didn't understand what it was doing, right? So I definitely wasn't going to do chemo. That's for sure. You just decided. Is is, is that yeah, was against, that a, against everybody? Against everybody? I was like on my own little hard island. decision. Not for me. Not for you. It, you know, my mom was like, "You got to do it." My sister's like, "I don't know." You know, you got to do chemo, like. And I'm like, and, and your mom's no in the health sense. field. Your mom's yeah. in the health field, right? My mom's in the health field, and she goes, "Just do it." And, and I told everybody, "I'm like, if if this is the one that's going to get me, then this is the one that's going to get me." But I'm I'm definitely not doing chemo. It makes no sense. It makes why, no sense. Why did you come to that conclusion? Why did I come to the? Conclusion? Yeah, it, it made no sense. Chemo made no sense. Like so the you, philosophy behind what you're doing makes no sense. You you if you survive the poisoning, it's you gonna, might live. You might live. Oh. So I'm like, well, what are the chances if I do the chemo that it comes back? It was like 60, 40 that it was going to come back. I'm like, well, why would I do that? Right. If they told me like 95% that it wasn't going to come back, I probably would have done it. But I'm like, the odds were not that great. It was almost 50, 50 to to begin with. And we're talking about chemo for how long? Six months. Six months. So that's, it's a lot of treatments. Low dose chemo is what they wanted to give me. So you tell your family, friends, anybody that's around you, I'm not doing it. Everybody tells me to do it. They're like, I'm like, if this is the one that's going to kill me, then this is the one that's going to kill me. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do chemo. So it, it made no sense. You decided not to do it. Was that before you found the Gershon I, therapy I, I, diet I, deal? I I found Gerson. I well, I came across Gerson several Gerson. years before. And I'm like, oh, they cured cancer already? So were you already thinking of that in your head when you decided? No, Are you that was like, in the I'm... hard drive. God planted that seed in the hard drive, so I knew it was available. So you already knew. That's kind of weird. How did you, what attracted you to that back the, then the, before? Food, food. Like, I food. had to start changing my diet. I had to, I, I, I wasn't performing well. I so you were terrible. looking at stuff and, and you found that. And I found that. I stumbled across it. I was like, oh, that's nice. They cured cancer. No problem. Oof. Okay, so if I get cancer. See, cause so I, I already kind of. But I, I think that's pretty crazy that you made a decision most people who have an alternative off the off the bat, right? They go, I'm not going to do chemo, but I'm going to do this. You just said, I'm not doing chemo. That's it. It's done. 60 40. If I'm going to, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I always thought it was the other. I always thought you I knew that Gerson was there. So you knew it was there. Yeah, I already knew it was there. And so but but did you make the decision like, okay, I'm not doing chemo, but I'm going to do this or did it come after? I, no, I I I knew I was going to say I'm not going to do chemo. This is a good possibility and I'm going to look into this kind of a treatment a holistic kind of heal your body not poison your body treatment which to most people is just it, they don't think it bogus. works yeah. they, they don't think it works and and I think most things don't work until you understand that Gerson is a system and the second I saw that it was a system I'm like it's going to work so the the Gerson thing I think about that and tell well Tell everybody a little bit about Gerson, the, the, what, the therapy. Well, the, what, the, a, a small breakdown because I have a I have a question about okay, that. Okay, so so people need to understand. I'll, I'll give you the, the 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 big idea. I'll try to make it as short as possible, which is tough for you. Which is tough for me, even during, uh, even during class. Yes. Um, 
cancer comes down to two things, toxicity and deficiency. Charlotte Gerson says that before she passed. That is what cancer is. You create a toxic environment through the air you breathe, through the food you eat, through the water you drink, through your emotional uh, toxicity, through... Um, chemicals, whatever. Chemicals, your, your shampoo, your soap, the oils you put on your skin. The, everything the, has a cancer everything warning. Everything. Has a cancer warning on it. Fluoride in the toothpaste. Walk into a restaurant, there's a little sign e- right there. Everything that you touch that's in a box, in a bag at the grocery store, it's all poison. It's all poison, and the levels of poison there it's, vary it's wild. based on based on um, what chemicals and what ingredients are actually put in the food. Whether it's food coloring, whether it's <sighs> all yeah. kinds of crap that people don't even know what they're eating, but it's good. Yeah. So you have toxicity. Well, your body can can get rid of some toxins. It's filtered through the liver, right? But in order for that machine to turn on, you need nutrients. The other half of the toxicity is deficiency. So now you're eating nutrient depleted food. The food that you eat, the, the soil is not restocked. Um, the foods are nutrient deficient, but high in fats and salts. Salt cr- changes the pH balance of your body, which makes you acidic, which breeds a ca- cancer breeding ground. Um, so the nutrient deficient foods, your food, you're not getting enough nutrients in the food. So you tend to eat more. There goes your weight. So your weight goes up because your body is not starving for food. It's starving for nutrients, it's starving mm. for high nutrient food so that you can feed the machine so that you can heal your body and you can turn your pH from acidic to alkaline. When you explain it like that, it makes sense. It's just putting good stuff into your body. And and keeping out the bad and getting rid of what's in and understanding how to what to put in and how to pull out. Okay. So people I tell people all the time, you can work out hard, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff, but it's gonna it, when you're young, it, it cam over here goes running every day for a month no matter what his diet is he's gonna he's gonna get in shape Mm -hmm. start getting into our age right uh you have to change your diet and i tell people all the time it's not just the exercise part it's more the diet part it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle because it's not just the diet right if you have toxic people around you that are constantly draining you and constantly you have an emotional instability which is a lot your mind the mentality that that will make you sick with the gershon Diet therapy. And you've told me where it's just juices of... It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. I mean, I think I've told you this before. I couldn't do it. Honestly. And I'll I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I've seen how disciplined you were with this stuff. I mean, it was ridiculous. 12 juices a day. um, Four coffee enemas a day. Four coffee enemas a day. Uh, it, it, it was it was just too much. I mean, nothing other than that. Which You're fighting for your life for how many months? I was on twelve. Well, we built up to twelve juices, so I was on twelve juices. Like I think two months. And what are the juices? But 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 it built. It was like nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it was like the first three months. It was like it was building up every month. I mean, for a week, okay. Uh, Six months yeah. of of juicing. You got to understand that um, they, they tell you, this is what they tell you. They don't tell you this. They don't tell you that you got to stay on it for the rest of your life. They tell you two years. Yeah, well, some people need two years of that intensive 12 juice, 13 juice a day schedule in order to get their body's natural healing mechanism to kick on, right? It takes them that long. It took my body's mechanism like two months. So you were on it. So you it get on the fast. diet. I, I had clear blood work in three months. Clear. My, in four months, when I went in for my scheduled oncology appointment, the, my oncologist told me, you're committing suicide. I go, we'll see, bro. Four months later, I present him my paperwork. I what go, he I'm say? here. What did he say? I said, what do you think? He goes, how did you do it? Wow. He goes, how did you do this? I'm like, I told you. 
told you. So I, I think I think the grit of wrestling, toughness, discipline, once again played a role. It was opportunity. What do you mean? If I didn't have the support that I had from the jiu jitsu community, from my family, it was it, it is an impossible feat for my sister, right? It was an impossible feat. It was I that, couldn't afford it. That, that, I wouldn't that, have been able to afford it. That's what I'm saying. I, I I couldn't have done it. I would have said, "Give me the chemo, and I would deal with the sixty forty think, later." And I think that, and I think that most people feel that way. There, ha, there had to be a different mindset, though. There, I mean, I, I mean, most people would just say, "It is what it like." You like yeah. live out the rest, and you know, and, and we'll flip a coin. Hopefully, it lands on heads. You know, I, 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 um, I asked myself, you know, several years ago, or the thought came into my head several years ago, like, if I was to fight, like, if I was, even me now, right now, like, if we're in battle, um, and you know you're outnumbered, and you know things aren't looking good, do you run, cower and run? stand and fight and I already had answered that question when I fought Alberto Crane like I stood and fight I could have just as easily quit same thing with this I could have just as easily quit and thrown in a towel and people get into a depression they spiral out of control their emotions spiral out of control instead of harnessing that energy and not dumping the chemicals making the acidic environment more acidic and getting sicker and breeding ground, breeding, making a breeding ground for cancer in your body. I chose not to do go that way. I stay, and, you, I stay, and you won. I won, and and and, it, and honestly, I'm not bragging, but it wasn't even close. It took me three months. It, now, now I, I'm I'll, still I'll, on the diet. I'm I, still I, on diet. I would I, I would I would have to admit when you told me you were. You were done. You were healed after three months. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was. I I I thought you were just had some false hope there a little bit. <laughs> I, I I mean, right? I'm sure. I'm sure people Everybody, told you that. Yeah. I right? mean, I, I was happy for you. I was like, really? And you're like, yeah. I mean, I think the only one that believed you was probably Doctor Doctor Mike, our our gym guru there. But I think for the most part, I was just like, I I, I don't know, man. I mean, okay. If, if you're saying that, I mean, and you down a bunch of vitamins and your juices and you kept going. And you're still here. Man, I, I did. Uh, my goal this year was to do like 4,250 miles on my bike this year. I'm way ahead of that. I'm probably going to get almost five. I did three last year. How is it? That a guy who had cancer two years ago can ride 4,500 miles on his bike, plus teach and do privates and travel and raise two kids. It's crazy. And Are you cancer-free? I've been cancer-free. After I was cancer-free after three months. And then I was able... Then they did a colonoscopy uh, April... I think it was like April. Like I got it. I had a rough 2017. 2017 was rough. But I got diagnosed in June. I was cured by October. I had the academy by December. I had my colonoscopy in April. And they told me, like, when is my next one? The guy, My doctor was like three years. Three years. There's so nothing. Next year? Totally clear. One more year after that. Yeah, I think one more year after that. Like, totally clear. It's wild. So, I'm not worried about it. I know what caused it. I know, you know, I breathe. I eat well. I eat really clean. Yeah, you're you're super disciplined now. Yeah. That's why the old Del Taco, Taco Bell, it's good. hamburger special. It's convenient. Hobby. It's convenient. Like, I don't what, see that. I, 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 don't, I didn't see that guy. I, I, you got to realize that you have to plan your meals. Problem is, oh, I'm hungry. I forgot to eat. You're in this particular situation. You got to run to the store. What choice are you right. going to make? 
the quickest one and well, ch- and cheapest. Well, well, it's the cheapest, the quickest, but I mean the convenience. Convenience. So you can just as easily go to a grocery store, yeah, and get a salad and and get get things that. But it's making that choice. It's the discipline to be able to make that right. choice, and and um, I, I think it. I think my mentality changed like about that stuff and it was with dr mike and dr mike tells me one day i'm in his office getting treated it's how long you want to live for i don't know my grandpa's like 80 i live in my 80s he goes why not 100 and i said 100 and he's like yeah why do you say 80 i said i don't know most people start he goes most people are beat up in the last 15 years of their life is debilitating they're in a walker. They're in. They, they have a cane. They have all this sickness. They're in and out of the hospital. We can live to hundred if we disciplined ourselves a little bit more in the earlier years. Make the change, and you could live comfortably. You know, you get you people that get, people get to sixty five and go, "Oh, I'm retiring now," and they're sick for the next fifteen years till they die. They work sixty. They're, they're, they work most these, people. Why do I think that Corona hits everyone so hard? People are sick. People's health is bad. It's, like your it, their immune system suppressed. Their yeah. immune system, they're not in order to turn on the immune system like heavy duty, you have to be eating great food all the time and allow your body to detox. You have to detox. You have to help your body get rid of toxins. Why? Because the environment that we live in has a lot. Everything is toxic. Right. Everything is chemicals. Everything is bad. Everything, the water, the air, everything is bad. But you're not helping your body get rid of it. So what happens is it, it, it stocks up more and more in your body to the point where it breeds cancer. It feeds cancer's growth. So if you've been eating bad, and, and it, it's crazy because people I know that watch me do this who's uh, who, who are about to get put on medication because of one thing Ugh. or another and i just tell them i'm like all oh, you got to do is just do that and they refuse to do it people like, refuse so they don't value their life yeah and they don't value what impact they're going to have if they're gone Later. no because they're not going to be if they're gone they're gone well, they have the impact on their on their family their family yeah, but, ends but, up having to take but care but they don't of them. have to deal with that and then, and then they're, yeah, they, that's right. They you don't understand have, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. They don't understand the aftermath that happens after they, they're gone prematurely and the emotional that has, the impact that's having on other people. It's a, it's, it's a quite a selfish attitude because they really don't care. They're just going to, they're just going to run it till the, till the wheels fall off. Right. Yeah. Now, now I got, I'm happy you're cancer free. Your, uh, Every time I roll with you since you've been cancer free, it's been worse and worse for me. I getting mean, stronger, getting again. stronger back. Uh, I used to win some small little battles. Now, uh, maybe once in a while, but but uh, I'm glad you're cancer free. But this 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 podcast is called Street Gospel. We talk a lot about things in the street and, and matters out there, but the gospel now. When I went to your gym, I knew a, an old training partner of yours from the millennia days, Pomona days. He he knows I'm a big Christian believer. This guy tells me, Javi's a good dude, good good teacher. But you know he's an atheist, right? And I said, an atheist? And he goes, yeah, hardcore, bro. Hardcore. And I'm like, nobody's hardcore, dude. Something. something. No, no, no. Hardcore. Trust me, bro. I go to your gym, start training. You know, I realize, well, maybe not hardcore, but there was no sense of God or anything up there. Um, no. You tripped me out one day when you came up to me, and this is after the, 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 the cancer and everything, all the other issues you had in 2017. We won't get into, right? Just so many things. Seven or eight life-changing events. Yeah, just... In, in one year, yeah, just it was just a rough year, man. crazy year you had. Bad, nothing but bad stuff. A lot of people would give up. A lot of people would probably curse God. Um, you came up to me and you told me you found God. He found me. Tell me 
about that? Well, uh, the mind is very powerful, right? You can, you can listen to the voices that tell you to do bad things. You can listen to the voices that tell you to do good things. Um, you, you can completely be disconnected from this planet and you can be completely disconnected from your body. And so many things were, were going wrong. Everything was going wrong. And there was nothing I can do. I had no control of anything. Which we had this uh, appearance of control. When we don't have control of anything. Yeah. You can pray and, and try to look at happy a happy future and lay a happy future and, and hope, I, di- I didn't and have hope, that before but yeah. I, I didn't even understand what that entailed right all I knew was that I had hit a point where I guess you can say your low point like you just you just have nothing else you have nothing else and I was on FaceTime with my sister and um, she's like give your life to God yeah give your life to God All right so and I always thought, you know, I love my sister, but she was always a little bit too fanatical for me when it came to that. Um, and there's, I think the only way I would believe that there was something was to go through what I went through and to have the experiences that I had and the stories of, you know, um, purification, I guess you can say. And watching what I was doing, what was happening. And um, these are things that I'd never even heard of, in, let alone Christianity. I thought it was more like uh, voodoo kind of stuff where, where those kinds of exorcisms and stuff and things like that that would happen. I wasn't, you know, but, but when I experienced it myself and I'm watching myself do this stuff, it was just, it was way over the top. And I guess that's the only way that it was going to get proven to me because I was so far on the other side that it was so over the top and it took so much pain for me to come to the conclusion. It took so much pain because I suppressed and I endured and I, that mentality got, took me, that tough mentality of took me so far down the physical. We can control what we can, you know, the physical when you when you don't have any control mm. and um it was incredibly hard for me to accept even the help from my sister i would always just want to do things on my own i have always done things on my own and to know that you can't do things on your own and to know that whenever you need he's there and i didn't even know it there was things in my life where he for sure told me, and I, I just thought I just had a great idea. I mean, that had to be a Naira and mom's prayers. Uh, I feel that another thing, I don't want to harp too much on this diet, but one thing that I definitely noticed with this diet was I watched my body get rid of tar. And the more clear I was, the stronger I sense everything. Mm. I can have like a like your awareness. Uh, you hear better. You see better. You feel more. You're more in tune right. with, with what's going on. I, I think that's a great parallel. Physically, you're clearing out all the bad stuff. God came in. Spiritually, clearing out all the bad stuff. Yep. And, so a, a purification and, of the, the physical and the spiritual. It was a complete transformation. Because when you told me that, when you told me, I, I'm going to this church, man, I talked to the pastor, I was blown away. Pastor I, Rob, I, Pastor Rob. Okay, I, I, I was like, what girl's there? <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I was like. For the first time the in first my life. Time, I mean, I was being honest, huh? because I, this is all I knew. Then, then you started getting into how God changed your life and how you became a, a, a believer and he made himself real in your life. You, you, because the, the, where you were at and how low you went, it had to be God. 
It was it was too obvious. Like you said, oh, some girl there. Teasing, teasing. Yeah, but I don't think you understand where I was. Like, um, God brought me here too. Yeah. It was bizarre. 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 It was bizarre. Like crazy. My my pastor was like. You know, I want, I, I basically told my pastor, I know what I don't want, right? He goes, ask for what you want. And I was like, like, what does that mean? He goes, you have to shop for a wife. I'm like, what does that even mean? Shop for a wife? Yeah. Be, goes, per- you write be down, particular. Yeah, he goes, you write, he goes, write down a list of everything you want, and he'll bring her to you. And I was like. So the guy that went from, I don't believe in God, is now praying to God, Jesus, saying, I, I, I want a wife. Thank you. For- I had a list. I had a list of a lot, like 10, 12, 15, less than 20, but definitely more than 10 items, character traits, appearance, likes. You're praying for all this stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. um, dimensions. <laughs> oh, so you're being specific now. Very specific. <laughs> Very specific. And uh, wow. So, how has your life changed now that you have Christ, man? From the atheist you're, to you're, the believer. You. Just you. Just. You. You. you because I could, I could tell you how I, how I see you now. Can I, want me to tell you? Yeah. You're way more personable. Right? Right off the bat. So, I see your light shine a little bit through that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a lot nicer. More considerate. There's been some times we've gotten into it a little bit. But, uh, uh, you've been a little inconsiderate. But, but, but. I'm trying to be but, more present. But this is what I see. Javi comes back and says, I'm sorry, man. That was never you. Uh, I, 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 not that you're I, a bad I try, guy. I try to be, I, I try I'm not to painting be you as, I'm, I'm not painting you as a bad guy. I'm just saying there were some changes. And when you, and when, and when you have Christ in your life, there's some changes that begin to happen. And I, and, and I, it doesn't happen all at once either. No, no, it doesn't happen all at once. Some people it does. Some people, they, they overnight, they change. Some people, God works in them a little bit longer and that's fine. Either way is fine. What I seen in you is I was like, okay, you're going to church. You're, you're, you say you're a believer now. And I'm not saying I was doubting anything, but I was like, time will tell. I hope so. Let's do it. Okay. What do we need to work on? What do we, what do we got? Let's see. And I began to see these changes in you. And I was like, okay, that's different. That's different. More personable, more, uh, from the heart conversations. I can say that was cool. A lot of good stuff. I, I think I was just blown away because I knew the old Javi, atheist Javi. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think um, I was the worst guy in the world. No, I, no, nothing I, like I, that. I think. I think I had a good heart. Like, like, like I said, I wasn't out to, to just beat people up and hurt people. I was never my nature. But. I, did, I think you're a more I did present. Things. I did things. Yeah. Yeah. God's good, man. God's good. I, I, I'm I very happy to have known you. Happy to have trained with you. Me and, and Cam there. You know, he slacked off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that white belt's still in there with three stripes. He, he, he couldn't get that blue. <laughs> Anyways, but I, I, I appreciate you coming out, man. Um, And, and the great story. I love talking fighting with you. you. You know the fight game. You know self-defense. You know jujitsu. You have very good teaching skills that are just easy to get. And I know you developed that over time. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure still, that out. Still developing them. So I, I'm I'm happy I've met you. I've earned my Thanks. purple belt with you. Uh, I'll still train with you. Uh, still talk God with you, which is which I like. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm like a purple belt with Jesus, you know, and, and, and I could show you a few things, you know, yeah. you know, 
I've, but, asked, uh, I've asked you before. I appreciate what do you, that. What do you think about this? What do you think about this, Dave? I, I, I like our conversation. You know I'm the most honest guy, and I think sometimes you're a little hesitant to ask me now because you're like, sometimes I'm like, do I really, do I really want to know what this guy And I always tell you, Hav, I'm going to tell you the truth because I'm your friend. And I can't, and I don't know no other way. If it's a great idea, if I think it's gonna work, I'm gonna. T- if 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 I don't think it's gonna work, I'm gonna tell you. Either way, but I think that makes good friendships. I mean, you could you could just blow smoke up people's butt always, and you know, and just kind of wipe your hands with it. Or I, man, I, I, I I've I've had students in the past are like, yeah, I want to fight, and I'm like. I could just say, yeah, go for it, you know, or you can, or you can be honest with the person and be like, not the greatest career choice. Like if anybody's going to, I'm real good at spotting talent. I know, I I know if I was a recruiter, I know exactly what I'm looking Looking for. for, Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's certain people, there's certain people that, there's certain people that can fight and there's certain people that shouldn't fight. Right. And, and, uh, I, I've had friends that I've watched friends that were decent in the room or even guys that were good in the room. And um, even though they were good in the room, the fighting is has a, the physical, but it has also the intellectual, but it also has the emotional. And some guys just couldn't handle it. Too much. Yeah. So some guys just shouldn't. All right. We're going to wrap this up because I know you got to get to the gym. So yeah. I got... What we call the Furious Five. Furious Five is five questions we ask you. Short answers. You got to go and we got to wrap this up. (laughs) All right. Question number one. If you weren't a fighter, it wasn't your career, no fighting, no nothing. What would your career be? What would you be? One thing. I honestly don't know. Like, I, when I went to college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no idea what I wanted to be. I, I honestly... Dream was, job right now. If you weren't fighting, teaching, and you can be anything. dream job? Yeah, you can be anything. I like my job. No, anything but that. Or oh, anything but that? Yeah. Like, you, you couldn't if, be a fighter, I nothing. would, like, if I had, like, the money, like, like just crazy money, I would love to develop real estate. That's develop fun. real estate. Okay, fine, so real you know? estate developer, Commuti- investor, community it, like development where you li- would lay it out, like right here, like in Rancho. Like, have you seen? You know what Terra Vista is, right? Yeah, here, right? I think that's brilliant. I mean, I, it's super nice. It's it's, it's the, the whole community was designed like the houses are laid out. Like a project like that would be. I could see you doing that. That'd be fun. You're you're really organized. Bike designer. <sighs> Bike designer. Bike designer. Engineer. Engineer of some kind too. Like I like I like. Yeah, I see you design. Yeah, that that, that is a good point. Yeah, I should have known that. Toughest fight? Uh, I I think the Mendes fight was tough in, in a sense where I had I had I had a couple of tough fights I thought were tough. I thought the I thought the Mendes fight was tough because he ended up hitting me with a good shot in the third round that broke my nose. Really, the only punch he landed all fight, but it didn't land. Um, I fought a guy named Adriano Nazal. I underestimated and I ended up having a tough fight. It was a tougher fight than I than I was ready for, I guess you can say. Like I thought I was gonna blow through the guy. And then circumstantially the Alberto Crane fight was tough. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. It was just it was just tough to win. I, I just didn't realize I was in a no win situation. You know what I mean? Right. Until I was there. Cam said this is Cam's question. Question number three. He said, You can fight anybody, dead, alive, any weight class. Who would you have fought? Uh, I actually did fight the guy I wanted to fight. Uh, Jens Pulver. Jens Pulver. Yeah, I wanted to fight Jens for years and uh, just ended up fighting him, you know, in the WEC. But uh, I'd always, I'd, I'd always wanted to compete against BJ Penn again. BJ Penn. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Maybe we could do like a, like a. Like an exhibition fight, like Roy Jones or Tyson, you know what I mean? We'll, 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 do, like, we'll do an exhibition. No exhibition. We'll, no exhibition. The, the senior tour. They're not going to be gonna, throwing we're, light we're shots. We're going to do this. I, they're, they're not, right? If you were in an ex- exhibition with, B, with BJ right now, it would get heated at one point in time, right? 
I don't get emotional. I don't get. No, no. I mean, it, you. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna uh, lose. I, I, but I spar with you and gave you a good shot, and you give me two back. So that's what I'm talking about when it gets heated. If you, if you get hit in the, in a good shot, you're coming back with something else. Fighters just do that. You know, I I, I was never known to be a brawler, but I brawled in the room. I I, I had no problems. Brawling. But you don't it's, think it's that a, it's a matter of you don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. But you don't think that it, if if we set up something and it was you and BJ, at one point in time it wouldn't get like oh this is just an exhibition. But th- then it'd get a little real in some points. Yeah, I'm not gonna lose. Yeah, it has to be right. That's what I'm saying. We're not baking cupcakes. That, so that's why Tyson, Roy Jones. It, at once, at some point in time, somebody's gonna hit somebody, and it's gonna get real. Right. You don't want to lose, man. It's too much ego. Question number four. Big Star Wars guy. Cam knows how big of a Star Wars guy I, you are. I, I'm, I'm familiar with the Force. You use it all the time. The Force is real. Force is real. I like that choke that you do using the Force. <laughs> okay? Trap your arms. And... You can be any Star Wars Darth character. Vader. Vader. Why? Of course. He was the best character. By far. Like... I, I thought you'd be more Jar Jar. <laughs> That's Cam. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was saying either uh, 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 the Mandalorian. What's his name? Uh, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. That's what I was thinking you would be. A bounty hunter? You know, a, li- a little stealth. Comes in, handles business. Or you would be a great teacher. Han Solo. The handsome, Yoda. The handsome guy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> and what's his sidekick? Chewie? No, the other one. Uh, not his Lando. sidekick, Lando. There you go. He's, Lando, Lando was smooth, man. Lando had great hair. Lando had the great hair and everything. He had, had great he hair. Had style, me man. and Lando. Me and Lando. The thing about Lando is he didn't really match in the movie. I'm not saying that because he's black or anything. I'm just saying he was too cool. He, I, I, Lando I was not needed the cool guy. Lando needed his own movie, right? Yeah, he, he was just too cool. I was not. I was not. Right. I was not the the cool guy, man. That's for sure. So I was the socially awkward guy. So Vader. I would. I would have thought more Yoda. Teacher, I'm getting there now, right? Okay. As I get a little bit older, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming more philosophical, but I'm still mean. I, I still have that switch. I can still turn that switch on. I, I don't generally, but it's there. Mellowed out a little bit. Yeah. Last question. I'll let you get out of here. What's one thing you fear? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a tough one. Nothing. It's it's not that it's not that it's nothing. It's uh, multiple things. Failure. I think we all fear failure. Failure, failure. Um, being a slave. Being a slave. You mean like punching the clock every day? Somebody telling you what to do? Sometimes uh, even more literal than that. Mm. Being caught in that. It's real. Hey, Hav. I want to thank you, man, for coming out. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's always good to talk to you. Um. Anything you want to promote before we get out of here? Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm putting together the stuff for online, and uh, I'm excited about that, but I can't, you know. It's not done yet. Not done yet. So follow on Instagram, my Instagram at, at JVJujitsu, and uh, at the real Javier Vasquez is my personal one. And uh, Got some new uh, series out on uh, BJJ Fanatic. Yep, I heard BJ- it's doing really well. Yeah, BJJ Fanatics. I, I started sharing some of my punch defense stuff there. So um, go check that out. If we if this ban and traveling gets lifted, uh, you can always do your sem- seminars again, seminars, right? Seminars, yeah. Uh, seminars. Um, <clears throat> Javier Vasquez Experience at gmail.com. There we go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I'm just I'm, – I'm putting – all the, all the systems together, and I'm just kind of focusing on uh, when I release this stuff, I think it's going to be really good. All right. We'll keep an eye on it, man. Appreciate you coming out. Uh, definitely uh, 
just uh, thank you, man. You're welcome. Chapter 7. So that's going to conclude our very first episode of the Street Gospel Podcast with Javier Vasquez. Uh, we hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, we'll be back in about 7 to 10 days with another podcast. Stay on the lookout. Uh, check us out at Street Gospel Podcast and on YouTube at Street Gospel TV. We appreciate it and uh, we out. Thank you.